Thank you. So let me call the second speaker, Safraj from Hong Kong. She's a neurologist. Join me to welcome. Thank you very much for the introduction and for inviting me here. I will be talking about how you can uh, do body shaping uh, via um, basically hormonal balance. And the uh, truth is that uh, if people have a hormonal imbalance, they cannot lose weight and they cannot build muscle like if they have a growth hormone imbalance. So the uh, trick is not just exercising, the trick is the hormones, the hormonal balance. And uh, there is a very large range. So even if you are at the lower part of your range, you can be kind of a problem, but nobody is going to treat it because they say, well, you know, you're still in the normal range. But if you're on the peak, that's when your body is functioning properly. Now, what are hormones? Hormones are communicators. They're cellular communication agents. And there is a spectrum of hormonal uh, substances that are produced by cells that is uh, <coughs> quite wide. Um, several hormones, about uh, thousands and thousands of hormones. Of course, we only know a few of them, the popular ones, like growth hormone and cortisol and uh, D3, etc. But there's several, several hormones. And it's not only the endocrine cells, but even non-endocrine cells that produce hormones, like neurons, some types of lymphocytes, mast cells, natural killer cells, endothelial cells, monocytes, platelets, all of these cells are producing hormones. Now, the hormonal problem is a systemic problem and it cannot be solved by changing one component. You have to change several components simultaneously to attain this hormonal balance. Now, the other, the, there is a problem. The aging problem is, uh, is intricate, intricately related to the uh, hormonal imbalance. So you have a decline in certain hormones, you have an increase in other hormones, that's the imbalance situation, you have reduced resting metabolic rate, that's very interesting. Basically as you're aging, when you're sitting down, you're losing less calories than a younger person, or if, when you're sleeping. So it's a reduced resting metabolic rate. And uh, diminished energy production, the uh, separation of your red blood cells, increased toxicity, toxicity will increase uh, the metabolism, will interfere with metabolism and all other endocrinological aspects. And here are the effects of hormonal imbalance. Cortisol is gonna give wrinkles, pigmentations, um, other hair loss, other problems, testosterone also, uh, uh, the uh, cortisol is going up, testosterone growth hormone, and IGF-1, and uh, DSH and several other hormones are going down, estrogen, progesterone, DHEA, etc. And there, of course, there is the hormonal therapy, and the bioidentical hormones have been rendered safe by the FDA. However, there are other compounded preparations that have not been approved by the FDA. And there are some risks involved, like blood clots and stroke and heart disease, breast cancer, etc. Now, what about diet? Um, the problem with diet is that as your fat cells release the uh, fat to, be, to become energy, it also releases uh, toxins. And the toxins are interfering with your entire endocrinological system. And the problem is the, these detox products that you have in the market, like drinks and food baths, they do not deal with persistent organic pollutants, which is a problem. And toxicity will interfere with all hormones. It basically <coughs> interferes, it goes into the hormonal receptor and interferes with it. And what happens is that you have two uh, hormones called uh, leptin and grechlin. The grechlin increases the hunger, the uh, leptin decreases hunger. And when these are interfered, in, in, both, in both cases you end up starving. Uh, the, basically, the leptin will decrease the hunger, so you cannot decrease hunger anymore, so you're starving. And the grechlin uh, will just continue increasing hunger without the feedback loop to say now the stomach is filled. So no, no matter what, you're going to end up. So basically, the more toxic you are, the more hungry you are. 
And the more hungry you are, the more weight you put in, and your visceral fat increases, and the fat stores toxins, so you're more toxic to become, so it's a vicious circle. And this is a visual, the problem is that visceral fat is the biggest problem, why? Because not only it wraps itself around organs, it enters the organs, invades them, like this is a fatty liver, for example, and you can see this liver cannot function. And working out with visceral fat, okay, at a younger age, yes, you can do it, but after a certain age, like 50, 55, you cannot. You're gonna break your back because your body cannot support all this strenuous exercise. And there is another problem. As your testosterone, when you're in very strenuous exercise, as your cortisol increases, your testosterone decreases because there is a, a negative inverted relationship between testosterone and cortisol. So you end up, you, you exercise, that's great, but then, if you're over-exercised, you're increasing the cortisol, the cortisol interferes with everything, and you go back to square one, where you start putting weight, because cortisol will increase your weight. Another problem is that it upsets the pH balance because of the lactic acid that is necessary during exercise, because you run out of oxygen. <coughs> so is there a way of exercising without exercising, basically? And there is a... Uh, uh, something that was developed in uh, London University, uh, Jerry Pollock, he was a doctor and a mechanical engineer, and he said, well, if it's the hormones that uh, decrease the weight and basically build the muscle, why don't we focus on stimulating the hormones and skip the <coughs> exercise part? And there was a, um, a study that was done on RNA uh, gene expression uh, with this technology in 1990, before the, the technology was uh, basically <coughs> completely developed, and they found that there was a rapid muscular hypertrophy, 250% increase in RNA content of the muscles, and uh, basically an activation of the skeletal <coughs> slow type genes. Uh, this uh, was uh, an article from Sunday Times from 1994 that uh, published uh, the uh, uh, the technology that uh, started uh, at that time in, um, after 17 years of empirical research. And what it does, it basically gives a blueprint motor nerve signal to the, to, via voltage, it throws it through the skin via voltage. That hunts for the nerve, and through resonance, it uh, expands to the, uh, to the motor nerves. The motor nerves bring all those signals to the brain, the brain will release uh, hormones and the hormones will start the fat burning process. This is uh, basically a movie of how it happens, the motor nerve blueprint, blueprint signals hunt for the motor nerve, and the blueprint signals fuse the put the motor nerve signals, and that basically resonates through the entire system, and what happens, those a working of motor nerves around them brings all of this firing of motor nerves to the brain, because it's a central nervous system, there's only one way to go, to the brain. And the brain will then start releasing the uh, hormones that are, are appropriate during exercise. That, that's what the brain does. It's a uh, hormone, uh, the estradiol, all the hormones that are related. And these hormones will travel in the blood to reach target cells, which is uh, fat cells, that's and then will bind and uh, the, the insulin signals will enter the fat cells and uh, will shrink the uh, fat goblets and uh, basically the mitochondria and uh, will form the energy to, uh, uh, with other, lab, with other uh, proteins to build the muscle. This is uh, some of the board that's continuing the research. There was a research by Jerry Pollock that found the cortisol does not increase. Uh, we have done some more research on T3 and DHEA. We found a significant increase experimentally. And uh, that was with MRIs. We did a recent study in Hong Kong. It's a large company in Hong Kong uh, with Neoderm. And we found that VLDL decrease probability was 0.001 at 99%. Free T3 increased by 95%. Cortisol remained unchanged. HDL increased by 80%. IGF-1, 77%. DHEA 71% and testosterone increased 90% only for women. And this is some more studies from India. Thank you. Uh, is Dr. Halas here? Yao Halas? Yeah. Okay. Welcome, Dr. Halas. Thank you.
Investigation of 